it's a pleasure to see participants, colleagues uh, around the room and, and online. Um, and as Sam was just saying, I think this session comes very timely. Um, protection risks linked with conflict and violence are driving humanitarian needs, including food insecurity, um, while lack of food will lead to increased exposure and the risk to face violence, abuse and deprivation. And we also see that the most vulnerable groups, including but not limited to women and children, are often the hardest hit. Sam talked about the relationship between food insecurity, conflict and protection risks that is circular and mutually reinforcing. So I think this is an excellent opportunity to discuss how, this cycle, how we can break this cycle. Uh, addressing and mitigating protection risks is one of the priorities in Sweden's humanitarian strategy through CEDA. And among other things, um, we support interventions that should contribute to actively preventing violence and abuse, reducing the vulnerability of affected population and strengthening their agency. We are also committed to contribute to the reduction of protection risks and achievement of protection outcomes, regardless of sector. Um, those we are really and deeply committed to the centrality of protection through our humanitarian assistance. Uh, we have since a few years supported many of uh, the partners involved in this event uh, to develop and roll out results-based protection, which can involve direct support to country operations. We, uh, we also support partners to develop and roll out protection policies, tools and guidelines, including for risk analysis. And currently, we also support action-based research on the linkages between conflict-driven food insecurity and protection risks, with a strong community dialogue and decision-making, of course. Uh, Sweden is committed to flexible and multi-year funding, which we believe is also enabling contextualized risk mitigation and response. <coughs> and as Sam said, we are really convinced that identifying and understanding protection risks remain, remain fundamental uh, to protecting affected population in the first place. We are also convinced that identifying risks helps us to provide a quality, immediate humanitarian response, while at the same time uh, reducing further escalation of acute needs. Um, I think it's essential to strengthen collective efforts to understand and identify protection risks, uh, including through inclusiveness and collaboration with affected uh, communities and local actors. Um, we all uh, have a responsibility to contribute to reducing risks and deliver on collective protection outcomes as stated in the Interagency Steering Committee Policy on Protection. So to us, protection must inform humanitarian decision-making and response. It should be central to our preparedness efforts uh, as part of immediate and life-saving activities and throughout the duration of humanitarian response and beyond. Um, a shared understanding of risks and threats enables various actors to design multi-sector programs to increase the capacity of communities to overcome threats and to change behavior of those that are responsible for the threats. And here I think uh, we need to highlight uh, the opportunity to increasingly work in complementarity with development and peace actors and to collectively identify and deliver on protection outcomes. I'm looking forward to this session and to learning from, from you all. Um, and uh, thank you again for coming. <laughs>